Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the operating activity section of the statement of cash flows using the indirect method, which is the way more common method, the indirect versus the direct. If you're new, my name's Jeff and I'm teaching the financial accounting series and the principles of accounting series. So we're in chapter 12 of statement of cash flows. And so let's talk about just real quickly the operating, investing, and financing sections of the cash flow statement. So there's three sections. Operating involves net income, current assets, and current liabilities. Investing involves long-term assets, and financing is long-term debt and equity. Now, under operating activities, there's two different ways to prepare this. We can use the indirect method, which is our video today, and then the direct method. Now the indirect method starts with net income and plus or minus adjustments, and the direct method just figures out cash receipts and cash payments. About 95% of the time you'll see an indirect statement of cash flows using the operating activities. Now investing and financing are the same, only under operating do we have a direct or indirect. All right, so let's look at a problem. We have net income and we have some things we need to look at for adjustments. Now, if we have, we're going to follow these rules. If we have assets going up, we're going to say they paid cash to make them go up, so the cash goes down. If assets go down, then cash goes up. So assets and cash are inversely related. They get their opposites. If we have liabilities, now liabilities, we're borrowing money, so if liabilities go up, cash goes up. And if liabilities go down, cash goes down. That's our assumptions. So we're going to start with net income. I'm going to copy this. So net income and the amount is 25400 We just bring that down when we're working on the operating activity section. Now the first thing we typically do, or one of the first things, is we're going to add uh, depreciation expense. Now let's think about this. Depreciation expense is included in net income. This number, 25400 includes a decrease based on depreciation expense. There's a minus on the income statement. We would see we subtracted out depreciation expense. Now, depreciation expense is a legitimate expense, but it is non-cash. So if we take it out, it already has a negative. So to take it out, it takes a positive 8000 so it looks weird, but if you looked at the income statement, it has a negative depreciation expense. We need to take it out and we add the depreciation. So you can say you add back depreciation to try to get to operating activities. All right, the next one is gain on sale of land. Same kind of thing here. The gain on sale of land is a neg is a positive on the income statement, so we need to subtract. So we're going to make a negative 7,000. We're going to take out that gain because it's not extra cash. We didn't receive 7,000 extra cash. Uh, that's included in the original transaction. Now, cash payment on notes payable. Well, notes payable is a long-term debt, so that is financing. Decrease in inventory. Inventory is an asset going down, so it means cash goes up. So we could just simply say decrease in inventory and cash uh, uh, inventory goes down, so cash goes up. So this is going to be fourteen hundred. Declared and paid cash dividends. Well, cash dividends is stockholders' equity, so that's also financing. So we ignore it for operating activities. The last thing we have, we have an increase in accounts payable. That's a current liability, so we want to hang on to that. So increase in accounts payable. If liabilities go up, cash goes up. So it's 3200 is going to be a positive. So what is our total cash flows from operating activities? Well, it is looks like 31000 And we call this what? Well, this is cash flows from operating activities. So that's the first section on the statement of cash flow. Hey, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.